The U.S. locks up more people than any other country in the world. Despite an overall decrease in crime rates, the prison population in the U.S. has multiplied by 500% in the last four decades. While people of all races use and sell drugs at similar rates, people of color are in prison at staggeringly higher rates than whites, three times higher for Latinos, and six times higher for blacks. Once a person has a criminal record, their life is forever subject to legalized discrimination. That day I got sentenced, I got sentenced to five years in prison. They gave me a state of execution for 30 days for my birthday, which was coming up December 9th, and it was November 9th that I got sentenced. Kind of felt like a dream. You know you ever have that dream that feels real, but you don't think it's real because you wake up, except that you don't wake up. Stepping into, into prison was more like going from one neighborhood to another neighborhood. At the beginning, I was only like 22 years old in state prisons. Um, but as time went on, I kept getting in trouble and kept going to segregation, um, getting brought back to higher security. So, and I started maturing. So then I got more into like programming and, you know, attending meetings, self-help classes. When I first went to prison, I just, my son, my oldest, who's 23 now, had just turned a year old. And um, it was literally like two weeks after his birthday, I got brought into the county jail where I would spend three and a half years and then I went upstate to do like another like 14 years. So the first day I was there, I remember I went in and they gave me the grays and my gray suit and my DOC on the back. I was a little bit scared, but at the same time amazed at how the society within there functioned. Like everybody followed the procedures and walked. So it felt like school to me. You know when they call lunchtime at school? It's like the same thing. Everybody comes out of their hallways, out of their doors. They end up walking down the hallways and everybody finds their way to the chow hall at whatever time. But as soon as I walked in the chow hall, I recognized somebody from the flats. And they was like, yo, Izzo, that's you? I was like, yeah. Vente, sienta con nosotros. So I come over and I sit down with them. Like, this is the Holyoke table. That's the Springfield table. That's the mixture of Holyoke and Springfield table. Those are the fams. Those are the kings. Those are the bloods, those are the cribs. Before you know it, the seal is like, count time. Count time. Count time, stand for count. You wake up and you remember like, oh, it's a different moment. And it continues day in and day out until you get used to it and you're programmed into just living within that system. When I came out, it was really hard. Like, we, like me and my son really didn't bond. That's more like father and son. It was more like acquaintances. And we bumped heads a lot because I want him to respect me. I try to come home and be a father when I just should have been his friend. But I think a lot of people, like my family, like seen like a whole different side of me. Like, like I was really good for a long time and then it was like one year that everything went bad. So I don't think I've changed that much. I've always been a real good family man. I love my family, I take care of my family. I try to do everything I can for them. So I don't think that aspect of me changed. But my street behavior took like, it didn't exist anymore. How did I feel when I came out of jail? Um, I would say uh, I thought it was going to be like some super celebration, some super like coming home type of like, yeah, I'm home, here I am. It was none of that. Struggles in regards to applying to school and getting a job. Luckily, it kind of happened because my mindset was like, yo, I got to make this money. And then the next day I was walking through Heritage Park and a lady came up to me and she said, are you Izzy? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, did you just come out of prison? And I was like, yeah. It was like super weird because I'm like, who's this lady? And then she was like, well, do you want a job? And I was like, doing what? And she was like, well, I heard you work at the Boys and Girls Club. And because you work at the Boys and Girls Club and you went to prison, you kind of qualify for this job. And she said, uh, working with 18 to 24 year old youth that are coming out of prison and helping them like reintegrate themselves and like become positive role models within the community. And I was like, sure, I don't have a job, I'll do it. So then I ended up going there. Before I knew it, I became full time. After full time, I moved on to something else. So this program is not just about coming to school or us bringing it to court. This is probably the only family they ever know. You know, I get phone calls all the time about like, even guys that have been gone for like two years because we built a real good relationship. And I think that's what was important about the program. When I was a kid, there was nothing. We had like the boys club. More or less, 
Yeah, it was a struggle to get into college after you graduate from the community college. They put me back a semester in regards to me graduating with my bachelor's degree, but eventually I got papers from the state rep, Senator Aaron Vega. I also had uh, the mayor write a couple letters for me, and I had a couple of other letters from different people within the community that helped me get into UMass. I think that to make reentry more accessible, it needs to come from the higher ups. The people that are in control of the fundings, the people that are in control of making the rules. Uh, a bigger push in, um, in acceptance and in inclusion of these guys that are coming out from prison. So my advice to the youth would be pretty much um, generalized what we always hear, uh, stay in school, listen to your parents, read, 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 look for information, uh, pretty much stay off of drugs. The advice I would give my 15-year-old self, pay more attention to um, the school system, the way they do things, like in regards to grade point average and applying to different schools and all that. People say sky's the limit, but I, it, there's a certain extent in that. You can chase whatever dream you want as long as it's reasonable. That's how I feel, for me at least.